Yeah. Precious Father, as I speak your word, I request for the angels of heaven that I appear as a lion, even the lion of the tribe of Judah, to be in charge of this crusade. Means that everyone by your power in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? Say it again. Say it again. Dear Holy Spirit, take charge. Bless your people. I decree that this day everybody here must be blessed. And I declare a blessing upon everyone in Jesus' name. A big amen. Shall we get seated as to listen briefly? And I'll pray for you. Listen as you sit down, take your Bible. Turn your Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23, I read from verse 25. Exodus 23, reading from verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And I shall nothing cast thy young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee. I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thy enemies turn their back on thee. If thou shalt hearken. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Now turn to the book of Psalm. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, reading verse 33. Matthew chapter 6. I read from verse 33. Look at your Bible. But seek it first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. In Psalm 102, verse 13. Psalm 102. I read verse 13. 102. Read verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for a time. To favor her, yea, the set time is come. And so take note from this chapter, some verses, I'm bringing to you the topic, time for God to bless you. I say it is the time. So pay attention. Many people are always asking God to bless them. And unfortunately, they do not know that God has time for everything. Also, for those who want to be blessed, they should understand that there is need for qualification. Because God always requires whoever that they want to bless, that person will be qualified for that miracle. And there is always criteria for God to bless human beings. And if you have not met that criteria, you may be struggling and only to arrive to nothing. And so take note, whoever that want God to bless him or her must meet these criteria or standards. The reason being that when those who are not qualified for God's blessing receive them, I want to understand, whenever such person receives the blessing, such person will misuse it. If you are not qualified, for instance, for instance, take note. If somebody, a young man that is not born again and God gives him one billion naira, what do you think will happen to the young man? Answer me. That young man will buy cars and begin to carry women and begin to live life in isolation from God and begin to drink. And so, if you are like that, you need to be qualified. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
So God is ready to bless you today. But you must be qualified. Can I hear you say amen? You must meet the standard, the qualification, the criteria for God's blessings. So take note. I want to take note. If somebody have received blessings and is not born again, that blessing can lead the person to destruction. According to the Bible in Mark chapter 8 verse 36. Mark chapter 8 verse 36. Chapter 8. The Bible says, And what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in the exchange of his soul? And so, it will be a disaster that somebody receive miracle blessings and at the end end up in hell fire it shall never be your portion so once we are truly born again and obey the totality of the word of God we shall be qualified for the, for the God blessings in Jesus name so as many who are born again and obey the word of God and those who shall do so today it is time for God to bless you as you are qualified, God will bless you. As you become qualified by being born again today, God will bless you. So, we shall consider this message under the flowings of headings. One, the qualification, qualifications for the blessings of God and reasons. Two, our expected response and the benefits. Let's go to point number one. The qualifications for the blessings of God and reasons. We all should know that our Father in heaven is holy and his kingdom of family is equally holy. Whether here on earth, in heaven above, whether in the church or heaven above, his kingdom is holy. God is holy. If you look at the book of Isaiah chapter 57, I read chapter 57 verse 15. Isaiah. 57. Look at your Bible. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. For those say the high and lofty one that they have beaten in eternity, whose name is what? Holy. I dwell in I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble. And to revive the heart of the contrite ones. He says, God is holy. And he dwells in the midst of holy people. In First Peter chapter 1. He does not dwell in the midst of unholy, unrighteous people. He dwells in the midst of the people that are holy because he's holy. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, please open your Bible. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16. And I read, Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. You can understand the reason. Of dwelling in the midst of the holy people because he is holy and two cannot work together except they be agreed. God is holy. If you want God to bless you, you must be holy. Take note of that. His kingdom, whether the entering or internal kingdom, is full of holiness. Heaven is full of holiness, the church is full of holiness. The true church. And so, whoever that is born, whoever that is born into this holy kingdom shall praise the Lord. Whoever that is not born again or born in this holy kingdom shall not inherit the kingdom or the blessings of God. If one is not born again, if one is not yet 
regenerated, saved. He cannot inherit this holy kingdom, whether in heaven above or earth beneath. Take note of that. And so, for any person to enter into the kingdom of God, that person must be born again. He must possess the spirit of righteousness, spirit of holiness, and begin to live his life or her life in holiness. And when that happens, I want you to understand that person shall be qualified for the blessings of God. If you look at the book of John chapter 3 and verse 3, John's gospel, chapter 3, verse 3, look at it. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I son to you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so, Whoever must enter the kingdom of God must be born again and receive the spirit of holiness, spirit of Jesus Christ, and go on to live holy life. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, look at it. If somebody is born again, that is the only way. And they go on to live the life that pleases God. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, I read chapter 12. And verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And so, any person that must enter the kingdom must have the spirit of righteousness, holiness, and go on to live holy life. That's only where that person can be born, I mean, enter the kingdom and begin to enjoy the kingdom's blessings. So, the qualification for one to be blessed and to be truly born again into God's holy family here on earth and to live a holy life of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. So, if you want these blessings today, you must be born again. If you want these blessings today, once you are born again, you begin to live the life that pleases God in holiness, in righteousness. And that is the only criteria for you to be his family here on earth and then make heaven at last and be a beneficiary of all the blessings of God. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Matthew chapter 6, I read verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Once you are born in that family, God's miniature kingdom, once you are born and in that kingdom, I begin to live the life that pleases God. Honestly, God will bless you with every of your expectations, spiritually, physically, materially, financially. God will bless you because whatsoever you are looking for, all of them are bound in the kingdom of God here on earth and in heaven above. And all those things belongs to God. And as long as it belongs to God, as long as you are going, I mean, go on to live the life that pleases God, you will possess those blessings in Jesus' name. God will give them to you. In Psalm 23, verse 1, Psalm chapter 23, I read verse 1, look at it. It says, the psalmist said, Psalm 23, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If God is your father, if God is the one that takes care of you, I want you to understand you shall never be in want of anything. And so once you are born again into his family, into his kingdom where he is, I'm assuring you, you will never lack anything. As long as you are living the life that pleases God. Take note. In John chapter 8, verse 29, John chapter 8, I read verse 29. Look at your Bible. John chapter 8 and verse 29. And it reads, And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. When you go on to live, live according to the will of God in righteousness, as go on to please God and maintain holiness, I'm assuring you, and serving with all your heart, God will never depart from you. 
And as long as God is with you, he will give you all things. No wonder the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 27. Look at your Bible. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 27. Chapter 11. I read verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my father. If God be your father, all things that belongs to God, he will give it to you. He will never reserve anything from you at all, at all. Jesus said, all things are delivered unto me of my father. And so, as you become a true child of God today, and live the life that pleases him today, God will give you all things. Because all things belong to him. In Luke chapter 15, verse 31. Luke chapter 15, verse 31. Look at your Bible. 15 and verse 31. I read Luke chapter 15. Reading verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. As long as you are living the life that pleases him, everything that belongs to God belongs to you. And so, if you are here today, and you want the blessings of God, you must be born again. You must become a true child of God by giving your life to Jesus and begin to live your life according to the will of God. I'm assuring you, all the blessings of the kingdom shall belong to you. And God will never withhold anything from you. Jesus said, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. I'm assuring you in this market today, as I pray for you, God will deliver all things to you. Spiritually, physically, materially, financially, all things shall be delivered to you in Jesus' name. Now look at this place, the Bible in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21. Look at your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and verse 21. And I read chapter 3. And verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in man. If you're a child of God, therefore, let no man glory in man. What happened? For all things are yours. How many things? All things are yours. If you're a child of God, all the blessings of heaven, all the blessings of the earth, belongs to you. And when you ask for them, God will give them to you. Are you hearing me? Because it belongs to your father. And so, this day as you become truly born again, I'm assuring you, God will bless you with how many things? All things. Because you belong to Christ by accepting him as a Lord, as a personal Savior. And Christ belongs to who? To God. And I want to let you know, as long as that happened today, as all things that belong to Christ, that belongs to God, we belong to you in Jesus' name. So, once one is born again, and maintain righteousness, obey the totality of the word of God, serve God with all his heart or her heart, such person must surely be blessed. As I pray for you, God will count you worthy. From today, God will bless you. Every one of you. Nobody will go without the blessings. Remember, the Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Look at your Bible. It says, and I read, Jeremiah 29, and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God has a good plan for you. And as long as you return to him today, with genuine repentance, and amend your ways, and begin to live a life that pleases God, I'm assuring you God will unfold these plans. It will bless you and will give you heaven at last. And whatever you are looking for, the Lord will do it for you. 
And but look at this place that we are reading, verse 12. He said, Then shall you call upon me. That means when you are truly born again, these blessings will be yours. He says, Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray to me, and I will hearken unto you. In this program today, as you call, God will answer. I say, God will answer you. God will give you all things. But look at verse 13. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Verse 14. And I'll be found of you, says the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from the, all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I've caused you to be carried away captive. The point is, once you have made your ways and begin to seek God and you know and seek Him with all your heart, I'm assuring you, God will answer every request and God will do whatsoever His expectation in Jesus' name. But remember, you will serve Him and seek for Him with all your heart. Take note of that. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. Exodus. Chapter 23, verse 25. Please look at your Bible. Exodus 23, and from verse 25, I read chapter 23, and verse 25. It says, And you take note, chapter 23, verse 25. And I read, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall not they cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy years, thy days, I will fulfill. As you go on to serve the Lord, I'm assuring you, the Lord will service you. The Lord will maintain you, take away sickness, take away barrenness in everything you are doing. The Lord will service you and bless you and you shall fulfill your years in Jesus' name. And that is when you are living the life that pleases him. I'm assuring you and go on to serve him with all your heart. No matter what you are looking for, God will do it for you. I say God will do it for you. In Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, Deuteronomy 28. I read from verse 1. It says, chapter 28. And from verse 1. I read 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Take note of this. If you will hear his voice, if you will obey the totality of his word, I'm assuring you, God's blessing will come upon you. Even if you are running away from the blessing, as long as you do what pleases him, I'm assuring you, the blessing will come on you and overtake you. That's the promise of God. God will command his blessing to overflow upon your life in Jesus' name. So, the reason being that such person will use those things in a right way. Somebody that's born again, living right, and doing what pleases God. If God blesses the person, he will not misuse it. Am I right? Will he use it contrary to the will of God? No, if somebody is a child of God, he can never use God's money to go and buy alcoholic drinks. He will never use God's money and go into immorality. He will never use God's money for pride or for selfishness at all at all. He will use that money to the glory of God. If God has given you sound head and God has given you, you know, every good thing, you can never use it contrary to the will of God. That's why. You need to be born again and live right so that God will bless you and you will use the blessing in the right way. 
and God will be glorified. Can I hear you say amen? You will use your money to win souls. You will use your money to encourage the needy, the poor, and to, you know, to serve God. As you do that, I want to let you know God be glorified. That's why he has principle in blessing people. He cannot bless people to go and destroy, you know, and kill. He blesses people to live right, to do good. And I'm assuring you, beginning from this day, as you amend your ways, and begin to serve God to, and go on to win souls. God Almighty will be with you. He will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. So that takes us point number two. Our expected response and the benefit. Whoever that wants God to bless him or her. Should be truly born again into God's miniature kingdom. Here on earth. That person must be born again in the kingdom of God. That means... That you must be a spiritual member of the body of Christ. You must make sure that nothing is standing between you and him. Such person must endeavor to live right and obey the totality of the word of God. And God will bless that person. If you will meet this criteria today, God will bless you. Remember what where we read before, he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And it's righteousness. And all these things, how many things? All these things shall be added unto you. And he said, the blessing will come upon you and overtake you. So, take note. You must be born again. Also, the person must begin to serve God with all his or her heart. As I have told you before, according to Exodus 23, verse 25 to 27, the Lord will bless you, the Lord will service you. As you go on to serve him with all your heart, such person must be very familiar with God through total commitment and consecration and be known by the Lord and he or she will be qualified for God's blessings. Praise the Lord. If you are a stranger to God, you cannot be qualified. If you are too far from God, if God doesn't know you, you cannot be qualified for the blessings of God because you are going to misuse that blessing. But when you are born again and you go on to be committed unto him, consecrate your life to him and become so familiar, known to him, I want to let you know God Almighty will, whenever you ask for anything, he will do it for you. Praise the Lord. Take for instance, you have a son and that son is serving you always and is obedient to you and doing what pleases you whenever that son pray or ask anything from you you will not waste time to do it am i right anyone that is prodigal or living on righteous life if anyone that is stubborn and too far from you, when he's asked, he says, ah, you want to take this thing to go and destroy your life. In fact, sometimes when he's asking for anything, you will not even you know, give attention until that person begins to obey you and be close to you and do your, you know, whatever you instruct the person to do. And that is the way, the way God wants me and you to be with him so that he can bless us at all times. We must be familiar with God. We must at every point in time be close to him. And we must do the totality of his will. I'm assuring you God will bless you in Jesus' name. In fact, if God knows you very well, God will bless you. God will answer your prayers. Whenever you pray, answer will come from him in Jesus' name. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 17, let's see example. Genesis chapter 18. I read from verse 17. Look at your Bible. It says, Genesis 18, verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations on earth shall be blessed in him. Look at verse 19. For I know him. That he will command his children 
and his household after him and they shall keep the word of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. Take note of this. He says, I can't hide what I'm going to do from Abraham. What was the reason? He said, through him, the whole nation shall be, shall be blessed. And above that, he said, I know him. Because he will command his children to serve God, to fear God. So God understands and knows Abraham so much. And why he will bless and reveal himself to Abraham. He knows the future of Abraham towards his children. And towards the relationship that Abraham will pass to his children. And the, the relationship with God, uh, with his children. And God said, I know him. He will command his children to fear the Lord. Praise the Lord. If the Lord has known you so much that he knows how you are going to take care of the house of God, the children God has given to you, I want to let you know how you are going to serve and do his will. Whenever you pray, God will answer your prayers because he knows you. He said, Abraham is my friend. If you are known so in such a way by God, whenever you pray, heaven will answer. God will give you answer. I say your answer will come in Jesus' name. And in fact, God will bless you. In Job chapter 22, let's read verse 21. Job 22, verse 21. Look at your Bible. Job chapter 22. I read from verse 21. I quit now thyself with him. And be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. He said, What? Acquaint yourself, be familiar with him, be known to him. If you will be known to God, if you will be too close to God, I'm assuring you, blessing will come to you. God will bless you. If God has known how holily, righteously, the fear of God, how you serve him, Honestly, whenever you open your mouth to pray for anything, God will do it for you. He will bless you in Jesus' name. So, if God does not know you, He cannot bless you. Are you hearing me? Remember, He knows Abraham and did what? And blessed him. From today, begin to live your life according to the will of God. God will bless you in Jesus' name. Look at your Bible. In Genesis. 24 verse 1. Genesis chapter 24 verse 1. Look at your Bible. I read 24 verse 1. It says, And Abraham was old and was taken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? All things. All things. Why is it that God blessed Abraham in all things? And Sammy. And Sammy. He knows him. He knows his lifestyle. He knows his relationship. He knows what he's going to do in future as to his children's relationship with God. And so God blessed him. Knowing fully that that blessing will be to the glory of God, he blessed him. I'm assuring you today, as God knows you, he will bless you. I say God will bless you. Likewise, he also blessed Jacob, being the descendant of who? Abraham. Why did he bless him? He knows what Jacob shall be. In fact, he told Jacob, from today your name is going to be changed from what? From Jacob to Israel. And God blessed him because he knows he knows his future. If God knows you and know your future, God will bless you. In the book of Genesis 32, verse 26, let's see. Genesis chapter 32. I read from verse 26. 32 and verse 26 and he said let me go for the day break it and he said I will not let thee go except thou bless me and he said unto him what is thy name and he said Jacob and he said thy name shall be called no more Jacob 
at least but Israel for as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed and Jacob asked him and said tell me I pray thee thy name and he said wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name and he blessed him there so God blessed Jacob because he knows his future he knows that Jacob will serve the Lord from him the blessings of Abraham will continue and he blessed him and I'm assuring you today as you make yourself known to him by genuine, genuinely born again living right pleasing him serving him I'm assuring you God will bless you you'll be qualified for God's blessings in Jesus name so if he knows you he and knows your obedience from now on your faithfulness from now on your love for God your righteousness and service to him I'm assuring you he will bless you but if you are a sinner and hiding your heart I refuse to repent I want to let you know he cannot bless you if you are among those people that continue in evil refuse to repent and do and do as you like contrary to the will of God he cannot bless you look at your Bible in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 Isaiah chapter 59 I read from verse 1 Isaiah 59 look at your Bible Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is he heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated, separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Take note, your sin separates you from God, hinders God answers to prayers sin and so you need to make sure that in this program today you must turn away from sin repent totally honestly God will bless you if you look at Job chapter 9 verse 4 Job chapter 9 I read verse 4 Job chapter 9 verse 4 is wise in heart talking about God a mighty in strength who had hardened himself against him and had prospered. Anybody could Pharaoh prosper, he died. And I want to let you know so also Herod hardened his heart and died. And even Judas hardened his heart in sin and killed himself. Nobody has ever hardened his heart you know to God towards God and prosper it's not possible and so you need to search your life and make sure that as you are hearing the word of God today you repent and confess all unrighteousness and as for the mercy of God I'm assuring you God will forgive you and he will make you to prosper in Jesus name so for those who are qualified and those who shall do so today it is time for God to bless you those that are qualified, those born again, living right, serving God, and doing the totality of the will of God, and those who will say, today, I must make up my mind, I will never do evil anymore. I will repent and turn away from wickedness. From today, God will bless you in Jesus' name. So it is the time for both of you, because the grace is still available today, grace to be saved, grace to serve him, grace to do his will, is available so it is time for everybody for God to bless you in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 Ecclesiastes chapter 3 I read from verse 1 look at your Bible to everything that is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant a time to plug up that which is planted a time to keep and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh 
a time to mourn and a time to dance and a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rent and a time to sue, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. That is time to everything under the sun. I want to ask you, what is the time here now? Why? I'm not hearing you. Now, the reason is this. The grace to be born again is here today. Christ has not come to take the church away. Rapture has not taken place. Therefore, you have opportunity to be saved by the grace of God today. So it is time for God to do what? Because the grace is available. Another reason is this. As many of you that are born again and living right doing the will of God, and you're a child of God, and here you are in this market today, you are qualified for God's blessings. So it is time for what? How many people? Everybody. God will bless you today. And as I round up now, you are going home with testimonies. If you believe it, say amen. amen. So it is your time. God will bless you. Spiritually, God will bless you. Physically, God will bless you. Materially, God will bless you. Financially, God will bless you. Academically, God will bless you. He will fight for you and give you victory. He will open a way where there's no way for you. In Jesus' name, I say it is time. It is time. And you are going to take what belongs to you today. In Jesus' name, you will never go empty handed. If you believe it, say amen. So as I round up now, search your life. Make sure that nothing is standing between you and God. Praise the Lord. It's time for God to bless you. Do you know that this very uh, program is not by accident? Are you hearing me? God knows that a day like this will come and you will be in this place. And that God has programmed to use this very program to bless you. Therefore, it is not by accident. Every one of you, that is the blessing for you. If you believe it, say amen. amen. It's time for God to do what? You know, some of you, you may be wondering and saying, well, pastor, why is it that we are on that song? Why not give us shit? My friend, look around. The, the weather is more than having anything over your head. Is the weather not so good? Is it not a sign that God has started the blessings? Honestly, honestly, my friend, there is nothing to worry about. God knows you. He has given you a wonderful weather. There is nothing to worry. If you have any small son that there is just to help you, to lighten you, but I'm assuring you today, your blessing must come. I say your blessing must come. So get ready. Look at this place. Let's consider this place before I begin to round up. If you look at the book of Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. Ezekiel 34, verse 26. I read Ezekiel 34. Reading verse 26. Please open your Bible. Remember, I'm rounding up now. I'm rounding up now. Ezekiel 34, verse 26. We have all agreed that it is time for God to bless you. Honestly, something will happen now. In verse 26, and I will make them and the blessings round about my heap a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessings. You see here today, whether rain or whether sun, there shall be what? showers of blessing. Everybody here must be blessed. If you look at Genesis 22 verse 16 Genesis 22 nothing can hinder God's blessings 
in your life today. Are you hearing me? Nothing will hinder God from blessing you. No matter what you are going through, today that yoke must break. Genesis 22, I read from verse 22 from verse 16. Look at your Bible. And said, by myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And a son which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the blessing of the of, shall all the nations of earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. As many of you that are here today, God has sworn. God has done what? He has sworn to bless you. Listen to me. That is in irrevocable oath. God has sworn. He said by myself, not by any other being. Any other being can you know, destroy, but God liveth forever. He said, by myself have I sworn that in blessing what happened? Do you value the oath of God very serious? He see you today. Honestly, it's time for God to bless you. Because God has taken oath, I will surely bless you in Jesus' name. I don't know what you're looking for. God will give it to you. I say God will give it to you. If you look at the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 19. Haggai, chapter 2. Please open your Bible. As I begin to round up, remember, God has programmed to do what? I, I'm not hearing you. God has programmed to do what? And he will bless somebody. I don't know the person. Are you among them? Are you sure you are not distracted? Are you sure that something has not taken away your mind from the, what God wants to do today? Well, look at chapter 2, verse 19. Hey, guy, 2, verse 19, and I read. Is the seed in the barn? Yeah, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranates and the olive tree had not brought forth from this day what happened. Please complete that statement. From this day, what happened? Who said it? Will he keep to his word? Please answer me. From this day, God will bless you. I don't know what you are looking for. Honestly, God will do it for you. Are you hearing me? You see, you get ready. Something brought you here today. Am I assuring you? You will never go home without problem. If you believe it, say amen. In fact, this program is for somebody. Who? Oh, who? This program is for somebody. Something happened in the days of Moses. I don't know who can remember what happened that day. It, when Moses was here on earth, who knows what happened then? Praise the Lord. It's like, like some of you doesn't know what happened that day. In those days when Moses was asked to go and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, something happened. Moses was a stammerer. He doesn't know how to, before you pronounce a word, he will say, wah, 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 and yet he brought the Israelites out of Egypt. He see you today, no matter how I speak here today, you shall be blessed. Whether, whether the way I spoke was fine or not, even if I'm stammering or, you know, my friend today, God will bless you. God will bless you. He see you. <laughs> I said that Moses, if he said come, he would say come, 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 come. And people will be, uh, uh, what kind of man is this? And yet, God used him and brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. As I speak here today, God will bring you out of bondage, out of sorrow, 
out of poverty, out of sickness, out of affliction, out of sin, out of us living. He will bless you in Jesus' name. He see you today. Every plant which my heavenly father did not plant your life, it shall be rooted up in Jesus' name. He see that sickness, it will never survive the blessing of God. He see that barrenness, it will never survive the blessing of God. He see that poverty, it will never survive the blessing of God. As God blesses you today, you shall see poverty no more. You shall see barrenness no more. You shall see sickness no more. You shall see affliction no more. You shall see trouble no more. It is time for God to bless you. Is it the time? Are you getting ready now? Now, remember, there must be qualification. Amen. I said there must be what? Now, are you going to be qualified? Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And without holiness, no eyes shall see the Lord. He see you today. Get ready to be qualified. You are going home with your blessings. The miracle of the blessings of God shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Do you know what you are going to do? As I round up very shortly in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Open your Bible and read. He said, ask what happened. It shall be given unto you. Seek what happened. You shall find, knock, what happened? For everyone that asked, who is among everyone? And Sammy, if you're among them, show me a sign. Are you among them? Are you among them? He see you today. Because of you, God has come to bless you. I say because of who? 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 This program is specially designed for me. I didn't hear you very well. Do you believe it? Honestly, that God that made that people that spoke and saw and walked at the very beginning and replaced kidney at instant of prayer, that God will bless you. And I believe that your problem is not up to the problem of 49 years deaf and dumb. Is your problem up to that? In fact, that case, senior many, so many people here. Do you hear me? Some of you, your problem is not up to that case of that one year's deaf and dumb. My friend, today your problem will be cancelled. That God who did it for them. I'm not hearing you. <laughs> Do you believe God is here? How many of you believe? He see you today. Impossibilities shall be made possible in your life. He see you today. No matter that old man that is battling and chasing customers away from you. In the name of Jesus, I arrest that old man. In the name of Jesus, I bind that old man. And I cast that principalities and power to abyss in Jesus' name. Anything standing on your way to be blessed by this God of heaven, that thing shall weed up your sake. Can I hear you say amen? Are you getting ready now? It is time for God. Jesus Christ has not taken the sent away. The grace of God is still much available. So there is opportunity of repentance and the blessings of heaven today. And so it is the right time. Believers, it is the right time. The Lord will bless you to continue to serve him and use the blessing to, to his own glory in Jesus' name. And so as I round up, remember, for those who are sinners and backsliders, they should repent, they should confess their sins and promise God no more. They should believe that Jesus died for them, shed his precious blood for them and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for their justification. 
as you do that today, mercy of God will come upon you. And your name shall be cancelled in the book of death, written in the book of life in Jesus' name. Remember, a Christian is not a sinner. And a sinner is not a Christian. Look at your Bible. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, he said, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that they might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9 says, Whosoever that is born of God does not commit sin, for he still remained in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, listen to me. Verse 8 says, A sinner is not a Christian. Verse 9 says, a Christian is not a sinner. Search your life. Maybe you're asking what is sin. So you can repent and turn away from them. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 17, eh, the Bible said, all unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. That means hatred is sin. Envy is what? Sin. Unbelief is what? Sin. Selfishness is what? Sin. Unforgiveness is what? Sin. Lying is sin. I want to let you know bitterness, keeping malice, bearing grudge, dishonest, unfaithfulness, all these are terrible sin. Lusting after evil thing, covetousness, love of money, love of the world, pride of life, is a terrible sin. Anger is what? Sin. You need to search your life. I don't know the one you are into. Confess them and promise God no more. I want to remind you, my brothers and sisters, that is here. Blasphemy is a terrible sin. Murmuring and backbiting, speaking evil of other people. All these are terrible sin. Cursing people, swearing with heaven and earth, worshiping idol, making idol and having idol in your heart is a terrible sin. You need to search your life and confess them wherever you are convicted of what you have done. You must ask the Lord, show me mercy. I will do them no more. I don't know the, you know, those that involve into, you know, going to the native doctors to make sure going for divination, going for pan reading, going for prosperity at the hand of the devil. The devil does not have anything at all at all. Are you among them? You must confess those evil and promise God no more. Whatever they are given to you, the powder and all those chalk that are given to you, or maybe they are giving you rings, or they're giving you anything tied and say, put it in your pocket. Throw them away. Have nothing to do with them anymore. And ask for mercy of God. I don't know the if we are into. Now, listen to me. Are you a native doctor? Please repent. That are the property and bond them. Are you among those that belong to, you know, secret court, open court, marine court? Any kind of court is in campus court. Gather their property, burn them. Renounce them completely. Maybe they're giving you, you know, rings or chains or clothes. Or maybe they're giving you coffin and a picture, an image of a man or a woman and say, keep this thing. My woman, they're giving the seven book of Moses and say, read this thing. My friend, gather those things and do all. Or they gave you stuff, burn them completely. Renounce them. And promise God no more. Amen your ways. God will show you mercy. Renounce them. Reject the devil. I'm assuring you the Lord Jesus will take over your soul. Amen your ways. Now, as I round up now, listen to me. My sisters and brothers who are here, all unrighteousness is what? Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. And so, take note, all those people that are into stealing, into picking pockets,
stealing from their husband, from their wife, from their children. Repent today and promise God no more. Are you a criminal? Are you a thief? Amend your ways. Are you among those that go to break people's, you know, shop and break their home and to pack their load? Repent and promise God no more. Amend your ways. And maybe among those that are into armed um, robbery, or most, I know, motorcycle robbery, any kind of robbery, one chance. Promise God no more. Maybe a froster, you do people, you do blind people, white people, you do government, you shit people. Repent and promise God no more. All unrighteousness is sin. And if you're a criminal, a froster, a thief, or a robber, when we are giving offering, please don't give us your offering. Repent and promise God no more. Return the money, whatever you are stolen it, and mend your ways. Such your life. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you among those people that into masturbation? fornication, adultery, confess them and promise God no more. Are you into homosexual lesbianism? That's evil. Renounce them. Ask for the mercy of God. Are you into prostitution? Are you visiting a prostitute? Are you among those that commit abortion? Confess those evil and promise God no more. Ask for the mercy of God. Honestly, God will show you mercy. I don't know that if we are into now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. Remember, there is no repentance in the grave. If you die without repentance, you cannot repent anymore. If you repent in hell, it cannot be forgiven you. I mean, do you are ways such your life? I don't know that if we are into all these people that are into abortion and into killing higher than sassing and into you know all those people involved into you know ritual killing terrorism or kidnapping and killing repent and promise god no more because no murderer has inheritance in the kingdom of god such your life amend your ways confess the evil promise god no more maybe you are among those people that are into fighting quarreling Beating your wife, fighting your husband, disobedient to parents, disobedient to your husband, repenting and saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I will do it no more. Show me mercy. Are you working for somebody or serving somebody and you are not serving the person, you know, with all your heart? And you are not serving the person to make, you know, to prosper. Rather, you are serving the person and pulling down the business of the person and you want in return for the person to say to you, that's wrong. You must serve that person and make sure the person prosper. In return, that person will bless you, will settle you well. And if someone has served you, my friend, you must settle that person. And if you are working for somebody and you don't do the work, you collect salary, that is sin, that's fraud. You need to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will do it no more. And those that are, you know, people working for you, pay them their salary. All unrighteousness is sin. You see those that give bribe, take bribe and stop money from people because of your uniform, because of your position, because of the office where you are. Nobody passes there without collecting, you collecting bribe, extortion. I mean, you are waste. Repent and don't do it anymore. Ask for the mercy of God. I need to smuggling. That is evil. Repent and say, Lord, I will do it no more. Are you among those people that take snob, smoke cigarettes, take in their hand, cocaine, heroin? You use, you know, or maybe yeah, that's your business. My friend, don't touch it. Don't smoke it. Don't have nothing to do with those things because there are things that defy the temple of God. In, and if you destroy the temple of God, the Bible says God will destroy that person. Repent, have nothing to do with any kind of such thing. Maybe you take alcoholic drinks, a local one or foreign one, white mimbo, you know, brugut beer, whole drinks, one percent or half percent, confess them and say, Lord, I will not touch them anymore. I will not buy it for people. I will not drink it, whether local or foreign. I will not work in brewery. I will not serve it anybody. 
repent and say, Lord, all this evil, I will do them no more. Honestly, when you repent and ask for mercy, God will forgive you. I mean, you are ways. As I begin to round up now, search your life. I don't know the evil you are into. Maybe you are among those that bleach your body and become yellow overnight. That's unacceptable. That's sin. All unrighteousness is sin. Please look at this place in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I read from verse 9. Please open your Bible. Let's see. This thing that I mentioned, let's see some of them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. It says, know ye not, that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And he said, be not deceived. Neither for the kettles, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers for the sake of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Those that live this kind of life, the Bible said, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you want to be in heaven, and if you want to be a partaker of God's blessings in his financial kingdom here on earth, my friend, you must do away with do all these things mentioned here. All unrighteousness is sin. And so, as I round up now, are you among those that marry and divorce? Are you among those that into polygamous marriage? Your second wife or third wife or fourth wife? That is sin. If your second wife, you are a thief. A third wife is also a thief. Likewise, the fourth. Pack your load and go home and leave the marriage for the owner. And if you are there, maybe you are a man that married them three, four. Remove the second and third one. Return your first wife. And if you left your first wife, bring her back. And if you ran away from your first husband, return back to him. Because marriage is between a man and a woman on and until death. Do us part. Look at your Bible. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. Matthew chapter 19. I read verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, made them male and female? And said for this cause, Shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twin shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twin but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You can see, marriage is between a man and a woman until they do your part. So, amend your ways and endeavor to live your life according to his will. And good things shall come your way. God will answer your prayer and bless you in Jesus' name. And so, search your life. You see all these people that, these um, women that pain their hands and pain their leg, pain their mouth and pain their eyes and bleach their body and put extra finger, extra eye, attachment and weave on and palming and jewelry and bango. They make up their body. My friend, are you like that? You don't need makeup at all at all. You don't need the uh, earrings and jewelry and bango. You don't need the painting of your body. And if you have done something like that, repent and throw them away. Somebody was giving us a testimony at the beginning of this very program. And she said she came to the choosing with the husband. And the husband left her there and disappeared. And then she had the word of God and she was irritated. She was not happy because pastor mentioned earrings and jewelry and bango and this and that. She became offended. And then she left and vowed never to come back. I don't know whether I had something like that. He was no longer interested in good, which kind of church is this. And he went away in a rage. Until affliction came. And then earring could not deliver her, painting could not deliver her, attachment could not deliver her, and the earring no bango could not deliver her. All those things disappointed her. What still all the church has made as a choice disappointed her. And even the hospital disappointed her. And she was dying. I don't know when I had it. I, I, didn't, I don't know when I had the message. 
the testimony. And then when now the husband said, come and let's go, you know, let's go to somewhere. And the husband brought her here. Was it here? And then maybe she thought she was going to market. But she don't want to go to choosing again. She came to market and met choosing again. And that was the end. As soon as pastor prayed, what happened? The issue of blood did what? Dried. And he said they had power. Power that she contacted that day. She can't forget it. She said something took her. And he said immediately the blood did what? Dry. Praise the Lord. Now listen to me now. And uh, she instantly hearing bye-bye. Attachment, bye-bye. Bango, bye-bye. Painting, bye-bye. Bleaching, bye-bye. And surrender totally. My friend, I want to let you know these people that sometimes when the word of God is going on, they will be feeling too big for the word of God. Sometimes they can even take exist and say, well, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. They have never seen something. And what still, when you enter choosing and do something like that, ah, before the great God, hey, the Bible said, I forewarn you who you shall fear. He said, fear him, that after he has killed, he has power to cast into hell. Yea, I saw unto you, do what? Fear him. Fear him whom after has skin has power to cast into hell. Do what? And many people after seeing the wonders of God. Yeah, the message will going on. They'll get up and say they're going. Let them go. They will go and come back. Praise the Lord. Don't stop anybody like that. Let them go. Do we have God? We are not playing. We have come to introduce the living God in this present world. And then we know we are serving the living God. He see you today. Let not your ring chase you away from my preaching. Let not Van Gogh chase you away. Chase them away. Are you hearing me? Chase away makeup. Chase away bleaching. Chase away indecent draining, dressing. Chase away photography watching. Chase away those things. You will be better for God's blessings. Can I hear you say amen to that? So... No more attachment and weapon and palming and earrings and bango. Throw them away. Are you hearing me? Nothing like painting mouth, my friend. Look at how people are shining like stars. Glorious. Glorious. Look at how sisters, like stars of heaven. Glorious. Those things make people to look so dirty. I pray you throw them away. Can somebody say amen? Now, all these type of people that dress, they expose their chest, their armpit, their tummy, their waist, and so they are dressed and cut front, left, right, and they, they'll be just going on the road, please, with crying their clothes. My friend, what does that mean? Cover your body properly well. A Christian is not a seducer. A seducer is not a Christian. Are you hearing me? Don't be a show woman on the road. Are you hearing me? Don't be a show lady. That seduces people. Cover your body and the glory of God will cover you. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so, such your life. You see all these young men that do jelly call. Rough hair. Scattered hair. They play their hair like a woman. Are you like that? There are those things that bond them. Bond them. Those people are so that sometimes see a young man he put on a very big bead in the neck. And then a big cross in the hand. Who told you they are born again? Are they born again by cross and beat? No. Born again is, has something to do with your spirit contact. Renewing your spirit by the Holy Ghost, by his word. And you have a newness of life. Not cross in the hand. Not beat in the neck. If that is the way you are showing your Christianity, that is mechanical Christianity. And it does not cross the eyes of God. Are you hearing me? Amend your ways. The Lord will bless somebody. He see you, God will begin with you. Can somebody say amen? 
I say somebody here has to repent and turn away from sin today, the Lord will begin with you. I am very, very sure. As I round up now, you see all these uh, women that are wearing trousers? That is evil. Dressing like a man. Don't do it anymore. And if you see any man dressing like a woman, is what? Abomination. That's evil. A man wearing skirt and blouse. Is he not evil? With scarf on the head. Is it not evil? My friend, that's the sign that that person is possessed. Therefore, don't do that at all at all because it is an abomination before God. Look at your Bible. Deuteronomy 22. I read verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. I read. The woman shall know whether which pertaining to a man. Now shall a man put on woman's garment. For all that do so an abomination on the Lord thy God. The award, abomination. Anybody dressing like that, abomination before God. And that must not continue because abominable person cannot enter heaven. Look at the Bible. Revelation 21 verse 8. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. For the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and moderate and homongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which born with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. People like that, abominable people, shall be cast into hell fire. I pray that hell fire shall never be your portion. Repent and turn away from abominable life. God Almighty will have mercy on you. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. Do you want mercy today? Confess your sins. Promise God no more. Remember, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, God said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the book of Exodus is talking about the blood of a lamb without blemish. And that is a symbolic figure of the blood of Jesus, which is to come in the New Testament. So it's just a figure of what is to come. That is not the original thing. It doesn't wash away sins. And so it was used to symbolize the blood of Jesus Christ. I show you something. In this place, look at your Bible. In John chapter 1, verse 29. Please open your Bible. John 1, 29. Look at it. And it reads, The next day John said Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Who is that Lamb of God? And Sammy. You can now see that Jesus is the original lamb, not the one used in the Old Testament. That was a symbol of what is to come. The original is Jesus Christ. No wonder the Bible said in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus shed the blood, he said, It is finished. The end of all sacrifices for sin. He said, It is all over. And he said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, not a way, the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There is no other way. There's no other truth. Jesus is the only way. Only through him. Who have access reconciliation with God. No wonder in John chapter 10 and verse 10 he says, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Today, eternal life shall be your portion. As you surrender to Jesus and make your love your personal savior, as you turn away from Satan from his deed, honestly and surrender your stretch unto the Lord, salvation shall be given to you. 
And so, if you look at your Bible, in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 36, if the Son therefore shall make you free, what happened? You shall be free indeed. You see you today, Jesus will set you totally free. The power of sin shall be broken in your life. Newness of light shall be your portion. Look at John chapter 1 verse 12. Look at your Bible. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. As many as receive who? Answer me. Receive who? What power do they receive? Today, you shall become a child of God. Your name shall be canceled in the book of death and be written in the book of life. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, therefore, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If any man be in who? He see you today as a surrender their life to Jesus Christ that shall be total transformation. You shall have the newness of life. The power of sonship, the power to live the Christian life, that power shall come upon you in Jesus' name. Are you ready for that power? I say, are you ready? Don't forget, but seek ye first. The kingdom of God is righteousness and all these things. How many things? Whatever you came looking for is found in the kingdom. And as you come into the kingdom here on earth, I'm assuring you all the blessings of heaven shall be yours. At the end of this life, we shall meet in heaven to part no more in Jesus' name. How many of you are getting ready now? In Romans chapter 10 verse 13, it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Rise up on your feet and call. Rise up and call. Today, salvation shall be yours. Confess, repent, and promise God no more. Everybody pray. Open your mouth and pray. I am sorry. Honestly, today, once you enter the kingdom, it's time for God to bless you. Once you amend your ways, it's time for God to bless you. Once you are qualified, it's time for God to bless you. Open your mouth and pray. Pray. Everybody pray. Believers, it's time for God to bless you. Promise God I will serve you. I will be committed, consecrated to you. Everybody pray. I will do the totality of your will. I will obey your word. I will serve you like Jesus. I will consecrate everything to you. Everybody pray. Call upon him. Pray with all your heart. No more righteous thought or ways or action. No more faithfulness. No more lying or anger or pride. No more selfishness. No more greed. Everybody pray. Forgive me and save me. Oh Lord, show me mercy. Mercy. No more fornication, adultery. No more unclean thought. No more cursing people, swearing with heaven and earth. No more anger, backbiting. No more fault finding. No more complaining. No more backbiting. Everybody pray. Lord, show me mercy. Pray. No more stealing and robbery and killing. No more abortion and prostitution. No more immorality of any form. Show me mercy. No more going to native doctors and belonging to secret courts. Lord, show me mercy. Everybody pray. Everybody, show me mercy. Forgive me. Save me. Pray. Pray with all your heart. Pray with all your heart. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh Lord, I am sorry, Lord, and sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh Lord, and sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Father. Oh Lord. I want more time. Sorry, Lord. 
Jehovah, oh Lord, if you are truly sorry, I want you to lift, raise your hands up. If you are giving your life to Jesus Christ today, can you please come in the front? If you are giving your life to Jesus today with all your heart, come in the front. I want to pray for you. If today you want to reconcile with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit, come in the front. Just keep on coming. Keep on coming. Remember, you don't look at any person because heaven is individual rest. And everybody is answerable to God. And do it because tomorrow may be too late. Now is acceptable time. As you hear this word, harden not your heart. Please just keep on coming. Coming. Remember, today is a remarkable day. That this is the day you are born again. It's a beautiful day. This is the only thing that makes heaven to rejoice. No other thing. This is the thing that gives God joy. That is salvation of soul. Angels rejoice. Celebrate it in heaven. Keep on coming. Today, your name is entering the book of life. Angel will be assigned to you. You will never die a day before you are dead. They will command blessing to come upon you. In the night, in the day, every time, the angels will minister to you. And you shall be a blessed person. You shall be the head and not the tail. Whatever you lay your hand upon, it shall prosper. In fact, you shall be above your equals. Begin to come out. The Lord is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. The hour has come. The hour has come. This is the time the Lord is receiving souls. This is the time for those that have understanding, that have wisdom. The Bible made us understand that for one to see for soul, it says such person must be wise, which means somebody also giving his life or his life to Jesus is a wise person. Praise the Lord. And no wonder people say that wise men seek for who? Jesus Christ. Keep on coming. Wherever you are, you can be far. Come because the Lord has ordained this program for your blessing. Who knows what will happen the next day? The Lord is waiting for you. Keep on singing this song. I was lost, and my Savior found me. I was lost, and my Savior found me. I was lost. My Savior found me. He found me so very far. I'm very far. Oh, I was lost. I was lost. My Savior found me. He found me so very far. I'm very far. Oh, I was lost. I was lost. Oh, he found me. The Lord is still waiting for somebody. Looking for you. It could be because of you this crusade is ordained. Oh, I'm very far. Oh, I was lost. Sing it. Oh, again. If a room, if a shot a womb. If a room, if a one year when my child a womb. If a room, if a one year when my child a womb. A child a moon, nebe dianya, nebe dianya. Oh, if a room, if a 
somebody smoking in their hand you are not in the front what are you doing where you are come in the front and the Lord will change your life that person also into masturbation come in the front repent or will change your life and you that is into secret court you are not in the front come in the front the Lord will change your life that person that is into robbery you have guns come in the front today is your day if after today you go to that ad, they will cast you. And I pray that God will deliver you today. As you come in the front, that person that is terrible into wickedness, into killing people, killing people. In fact, recently you shed, you wasted many blood. Come in the front, I want to pray for you. The Lord knows, you know, when you go to that ad, you know, when you travel, what you do, come. The Lord will change you, transform you, forgive you, save you, and bless you quickly. That person that is into homosexual, promise God no more. That person involved into kidnapping and use the business to cover up, don't cover up anymore. Come. Don't do that thing again. The Lord will transform your life. He will bless you and make you a future. Eyes closed. That woman that is into, you know, adultery, wicked life. Remember, the Lord knows you. Remember the last day. Come in the front and stop that evil. The Lord will show you mercy. Eyes closed and head bow. Eyes closed. The one that commit abortion promised God no more. Now say this word after me, Almighty God. I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me. And he was buried. And on the third day, he rose the gift for my justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus. Wash my sins away from my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus. I reject the devil. I renounce all the evil. I reject all the evil. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name I pray. Keep your two hands up. All of you that are patronizing native doctors, what are you doing there? Repent and throw that in a way. That hinders your progress. Don't practice it anymore. You better give your life to Jesus as I pray now. Make sure you renounce all the charms, all the rings, all the things that they have done for you. Even that one they use human being to do, my friend, don't do it anymore. Where will you spend eternity? Repent and promise God no more. Keep your two hands up. Say, I, as you have said this, sing this song with me. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender, I surrender all oh, to Jesus. Blessed Savior, I surrender, I surrender again. 
Father, I present this, my beloved brethren, before you. It is never your will that any of them should perish. Whatsoever they have done against you, against humanity, you are wrought, remember mercy. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, by your authority, I break that yoke. Yoke of killing and courtesy and smoking and drunkenness, immorality, fornication, adultery, every yoke of unforgiveness and bitterness and lies. I break them in Jesus' name. Then I plead the blood of Jesus. From today, I claim their spirit that stole their body for Jesus. For I cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. From today, sanctify their life. Make them pure. Lord, baptize them with the spirit of the living God, with the Holy Ghost and power in Jesus' name. The power to do right. The power to serve you. The power to pray. The power to please you. Let that power come upon them in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen to that prayer? And it is amen in heaven. I congratulate you. As you are going back to your seat, please take that card. Look at the card here. 